hustle. Hey, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a video that I've wanted to do for a while. It's got honestly a hideous title that sounds really boastful, um, but I wanted to give some essay advice and kind of talk through how I write my essays. And I figured probably the best way to add some weight to that was to say what the best grade that I got was because I'm really proud of it. Um, so I hope the title doesn't piss too many people off. But anyway, let's just justify it for a second. So most of you probably know by this point, but last year was my first year studying law at the University of York. Um, I finished overall with a first and in one of my coursework pieces I managed to get 90% which I was incredibly happy and shocked about. If you're not familiar with UK grading, um, anything above a 70 is a first which is the highest grade that you can get. Anything above 80 is really quite exceptional and to be honest I'd never heard of anybody getting 90. Um, I'm sure people do but it's not very common. So anyway, now all the justification is out of the way. If anybody has any other essay tips and tricks, put them in the comments. It'd be really cool to get a bit of a dialogue going rather than it just being me talking. So through the rest of this video, I'm going to talk you through my typical essay writing process. And I'm going to put some clips in from through last year of me doing all of these stages. So I hope that this is kind of useful. I know it can be kind of tricky figuring out how to write a uni essay, especially like if you're just starting uni. Um, so I think getting a bit more of a dialogue going is pretty valuable. So let's get going. So the first thing that I do after I get an essay question is I'd analyse the question. So basically I'd just write it down and go through it word by word. The first thing that I'd do is I'd think what topic is this on and what do I remember about the topic. The next thing that I'll do is break the question down word by word. So any um, words that kind of explain what the question wants are particularly what I'm looking for. So anything that says something like explain or describe or to what extent or um, says whether it's like a binary yes no answer, I'll draw that out so that I know what's expected of me. I find it quite useful to think to myself, if I had to answer this question right now, what kind of thing would I need to say? You know, what can I write that will answer this question? I didn't realise how convoluted that was until I came to edit it. What I'm trying to say is I don't have to know the content that I'm going to put in my answer, I just have to know what kind of answer they're looking for. Okay, the next thing that I'll do is draw out any keywords. These are things that I'm going to be using in my search terms, it's just the things that are really important in how the question is phrased. So maybe it'll be a question about the Investigatory Powers Act, I'll underline that because it'll be something that I'll be searching later. of my essay writing process is always to find and download my reading. So if I'm unsure about the area I'll typically go to textbooks first but I'll look for which specific sections of the textbook are relevant rather than like finding a big long thing that I have to draw through later. The next thing that I'll do is I'll use those keywords that I found earlier and I'll search them into Google Scholar and also into my university specific search tool because if I search in there I'll know that I have access to it. Finally if I find an article that looks particularly relevant um, I'll mine that article for citations. So maybe the question that's been asked, um, there's an article out there that's like really relevant on that question. I'll have a look at the citations and see whether any authors keep coming up or whether a different article is relied on really heavily because that can help me find a key piece of reading if I'm missing it really early on. Otherwise you end up reading that thing like three quarters into your process and finding out that you've missed somebody really influential. What can be quite handy with that is going on to that academic's like page. Normally um, the university will have like a page for the academic and just searching through and making sure that they haven't written anything else that you need. Okay, the next thing that I always do is a bit different, I think. I'm not sure whether people normally do this, but what I really like to do is download all of my reading and then upload it to my Google Drive. Although I'm not entirely sure how legal that is, so I don't know whether I should be advocating it on the internet. Basically what I like to do I download all of my reading and then upload it because then I can put it into different folders. So maybe I'll have a folder for all of my cases, a folder for all of my legislation, um, a folder for all of my articles on one point or a different point, and then I can see everything that I'm going to read in one place rather than finding an idea and then forgetting where it comes from. And it could be anywhere on the internet. You know, it's guaranteed to be somewhere in my Google Drive. The final thing that I like to do is after I've actually started reading, when I've finished an article or, you know, whatever it is, I'll put a little X at the beginning of its name because that way that thing will go right down to the end of its folder and I'll know that I've read it. It's a decent way of actually feeling like you're making a dent on the reading. 
Okay, the next thing that I do is read. Whilst I'm reading I'll always make notes. Early on in the year I was annotating like inside my Google Drive so you can highlight a bit of text and write next to it but I didn't think that gave me a very good like overview of what I'd read. I can get quite like lost in things and if I've got a comment here and a comment there I can't really form things together and actually I figured out that I memorised things better and the ideas stayed with me more if I wrote them down on paper. So something that's been working for me recently is going through an article and whenever I get to a bit where there's like a really relevant argument or like a really relevant section I'll write down what the author is trying to say and I'll put a little note of which page it was on so that I know for later when I include it in my essay. When I finish the article I really try to like summarise it at the top just in like a couple of sentences so that when I look back and I've read like multiple things I can think, oh yeah, that was the article that argued this. And also because you don't want to take a specific argument out of an article if that's not what the author was trying to say overall. Okay, after I've got all of my notes with my page numbers written down, I want more of like a cohesive view of what's been going on overall. So I want to be able to see how different academics have argued with each other and how things have progressed through history. I'm quite visual, so I tend to do this on a mind map and I'll just put different ideas in different areas and like link them up with arrows. I'm sure there are different ways of doing this and I'd be really interested to hear them but that's what works for me. If you can think of any definitely tell me though because like I feel like that's the interesting part of writing an essay how you actually like think about the ideas and draw them together and I can't really imagine doing it in a different way. Okay and hopefully by the time you've done your mind map and done all of your reading some kind of an argument should have come to you. There should be some direction that you're leaning that you're saying this is the thing that I want to argue. The next stage is to fit all of that reading and all of your original ideas into some kind of cohesive plan. Now this is the body of the work but it can be quite a methodical process so it's not too bad, it's not like just sitting down and writing the essay, it breaks it up a little bit, which is what I quite like about my process, what I think has worked quite well. So what I like to do is write my main argument right at the top of a piece of paper so I keep it in mind and then break it down into lots of sub-arguments. So here's what I think and here's why I think it and normally I'd have like four to six sub-arguments maybe, depends on the length of the piece obviously. And then under those sub-arguments I'd start to fit all of the different opinions from the academics that I'd done notes on earlier and all of my own little thoughts which are kind of how I tie it all together. So eventually what I end up with are some paragraph blocks underneath each of those sub-arguments and I leave the sub-arguments in as headings because it makes it all a bit easier to follow. So I end up with paragraph blocks with different like academics in and you can start to see how they can compare and contrast. Once you've done that you've got a pretty good plan going. But I like to rearrange those paragraphs so that when I come to write it I can write them in the same order and it'll make sense. So maybe I've got you know academic A at the top, academic D at the bottom and actually what I want to do is compare those two views. I'll just put them next to each other in my plan and rearrange it so that each paragraph is cohesive. <laughs> Okay, and then there's the fun bit. Maybe it's just me that thinks that I'm a bit of a law nerd. So the next stage is to actually write. So I always tend to start with my introduction. I know that some people go and write it last, um, and if that works then great, but I tend to find that whatever stage I dive into, that becomes the first thing in my essay because I want everything to link through. So I kind of have to start from the top and work my way down. So in my introduction I'll just really briefly introduce the topic and then I'll write all of my sub-arguments, I'll say here's what I'm about to argue and I'll just set it all out. And then I'll have my plan, which is the body, I'll have all of my sub-arguments, all of my different paragraphs mapped out already and I'll just go through and put it into continuous prose. And actually that sounds much more difficult than it is because by this point you've pretty much written down what you're going to write already, it's just a case of making it sound pretty. 
and then I have to write a conclusion. I really hate conclusions. I have this mindset, which is a really bad mindset to be in. If I've written something and like you've not got it the first time, go back through and read it. I don't, I'm not holding your hand. Why do you need a conclusion? I'm not wrapping it in a bow for you. But it's a really bad thing to think because the easier to read your essay is, the more it's gonna stick with somebody and the higher it's gonna score. So your conclusion should be reaffirming what you've just said, wrapping it all up. I honestly kind of suck at conclusions, I think. I tend to just like cut it dead. So I'm not sure I should be giving advice about that. Something really important that I almost forgot to say, when I transfer my notes into my plan, I also transfer where I found them in the reading. And then when I go through and write it, I footnote it as I go. So if I say, oh, I'm gonna put academic A in my, in my um, essay here, when I go to writing down what he said, I'll put a footnote at the end and I'll just do a really like rough footnote, like, like Alan said this on page three or whatever. Um, and then at the end, I'll go through and do it properly. But it's just handy to like not have to go through the whole thing and think, oh God, where did I get this and that from? And actually to know that all of your footnotes are in right from the start. Okay, and then there's the final step. The final step is just checking the essay. Obviously it's really helpful to reread your essay, some people like to reread it out loud to check the grammar, and obviously you need to footnote it properly. I tend to do that right at the end after I've cut everything out, just because I don't want to spend, you know, 17 hours footnoting that paragraph if it then just gets chopped. If I'm struggling to cut an essay down, something that I find really useful is like justifying each paragraph. So what specific point is this paragraph making and why does it need to be included? Sometimes I do that by writing it in like a little subheading in the text and then taking them out later. So, you know, the specific point that this is making is that um, this core isn't functioning properly or that this case was wrong or that previous cases went in a different way or whatever it is. Just writing what the specific point is and making sure that the paragraph is making it. Okay, and then when it's all cut down and checked and footnoted properly, that's it and you've written the essay. So I hope that this has been kind of interesting. I know that I definitely don't know everything yet. Okay, and that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I love the fact that this channel is starting to get bigger. And it's cool, like it's starting to become a community, which is so cool. So anyway, I'll leave you alone now. Thank you for watching, and I will see you really soon. Bye.